In this third video, you learn how to mount and connect a GE electric vehicle charging station. Watch the other two videos in this series to see the unboxing and how to connect up a circuit breaker. Please subscribe to CB99 videos. What we need to do this installation is the charging station itself from GE, $400 from Home Depot. So in addition to the charging station, we need to have a way to connect it to the electrical service. In this case, what we're going to show you is a situation where we have a sub-panel in the garage, so we don't need much conduit to go from the circuit panel to the charging station. So we've bought a six-foot piece of conduits come pre-wired with eight-gauge wire, and this is a $16 item at Lowe's. And the uh, eight-gauge wire is so that we can draw up to 40 amps out of the circuit panel to the charging station. A few extra tools that you'll need for this job are a hammer, flathead screwdrivers, electrician's pliers, wire strippers, vice grips, a round file, maybe a flat file, a one inch Forstner bit to drill the hole into the charging station, a power drill, sheetrock anchors, and the pin tool that makes them anchor into the wall, and wire cutters. One of the first steps is to put these ears onto the back of the charging station. They supply you with four screws for that purpose, four Phillips head screws. Basically look like uh, wood screws. Put them in, turn them down, and uh, there's two ears, four screws, and this is the way that the box mounts to the wall. This provides you with uh, six places that you can attach this to the wall. Okay, here we are at the main circuit breaker panel for the house, and we're going to install the charging station in the garage, and there's a sub-panel in the garage. So to be safe, we're going to turn off the electricity of the sub-panel. We're going to do that by just flipping this 100 amp breaker over like that. Okay, so here are the instructions for the charging station on the in first inside page here. It says that you can put the hole to bring the electricity in from the circuit panel either on the left side at the bottom or on the, on the bottom towards the left. So they give you a three inch window here from the bottom corner on up. When you're doing it over here, you can go anywhere uh, up to five inches from the front of the cabinet. If you do it on the bottom, it looks like you're only allowed to go three and a half inches. So. Uh, I'm going to choose the side. I'm going to drill the hole um, on the left side of the box. Do you want to mark it? Yeah, so that's that's right here. This is the left side. And they say that uh, you should stay within three inches of the bottom and within five inches of the front of the cabinet. So that means that basically that you can't put the hole here. You can put the it last kind of anywhere in this area. I'm going to open this up here to take a look. I want to bring it actually as low as possible because the wires are going to end up here and here, which are deep into the cabinet. I don't want to come in way up here and then right. have to go all the way down here. I'm going to put it right at, at the limit of where they allow it. So I'm going to mark the center hole is going to be at four and a half inches because I'm going to be drilling a one inch hole. And I'm going to center it here. So we're going to do it one and a half inches in. So this is, this is the center of the hole that we're going to drill in the side of the cabinet, right there. All right, so here's my drill, and I'm going to drill my hole right there. So with my nice Forstner bit, I put the point right in the middle, and then I start drilling. Okay. We're right in line with where the, electric, the electrical connections need to be made. Okay, so we're mounting this template here on the wall so that it's nice and level. I'm holding the, the level level and that lines up. Okay, and now we're going to fix the other side with a piece of tape. And maybe we'll do all four corners just to make sure things stay put. So what we're going to do is we're going to put anchors into the wall where the template is.
So what are you doing now, Club? I'm going to put the wall anchors into the wall. There's one. Two. Okay. There we go. Okay, now you got a very firmly attached charging station. Okay, so I want to strip these wires before I thread them in the box. I'm going to use these wire strippers here. I want to be careful not to nick the wire though. Okay, and then let me use the electrician's wires, which is kind of which are designed for this purpose. There we go. We're going to do the same thing for the other wires. Okay. Okay, I just tightened this, this the thing nut from the whip into the thing, and now I'm threading these through. And as you can see, they're popping out on the other side. And then we're going to push this conduit maybe, in there like that. And now it's just a question of hooking this all up. Okay, so now we got the wires in the cabinet and we're going to uh, put the nut on the inside here. We're going to use this washer that came with the whip and then we're going to throw on this nut here. The nut that came with, the with the whip. Uh, okay, so now tighten this up. Okay, so now we're going to tighten up this nut. Okay, that's good and tight. So we're going to hook up the ground wire here, the green wire, to the ground bus bar, which is right here. And I picked this screw here, and I'm going to unscrew it. I'm using a flat blade screwdriver because that's what it's got. And bring it, back it out a bunch, and then um, you just feed this wire through. And when you see it stick out on the other side, you know you got it through. And then you just tighten this up. So you tighten up. You tighten this up, making sure you're, you're tightening onto the copper, not onto the insulation. And uh, make it good and tight. Because you want a good electrical connection here. Alright, that's good. No. Okay, so here again, these are the two terminals that we're going to use for uh, the two hot leads. The first step is to back these uh, screws out of the terminal block. Enough to make enough room to get the wire in. We're going to do that on both of them. And it doesn't matter which one of these goes to which one. These are equivalent. Black and the red are interchangeable. Are interchangeable, yeah. We stick that through, again making sure that we see copper on the other side, but that the insulation isn't under the screw. And then we just torque this down and make a good solid connection. And we do the same thing here that. Okay, so we've got it all hooked up. We just have to tighten up these screws and we're done on this side of the project. So this is the special bit that came with the charging station. As you notice, it's got a little hole in it. It's a Torx bit, but with a hole down the middle. And I'm going to remove the flathead I was just using. I'm going to replace it with this Torx bit, the special Torx bit. And that's what we need to tighten up these screws. Voila! Charging station installed. So after flipping the breaker on the main panel, we can flip this breaker and then we'll go see if the light goes on. And we'll see if the light comes on. Oh look, it's blinking. Exactly what it's supposed to do. So here we are. This is the GE charge nozzle. It's a level two J1772 charging station. So it's a five pin connector and uh, the Tesla doesn't accept this connector, it only accepts their proprietary connector, but they give you an adapter that goes from J1772 to their thing. So we're going to put that on, and then we're going to plug it in and see if this works. Green flashing, we are charging. Now we should have solid green on the charging station, and look at that. We know that we have successfully installed the GE Level 2 J1772 
charging station to be able to charge an electric car and you can do this too. Hey, thanks for watching and please subscribe to CB99 videos and you might like the other two videos in this series.